I know I don't usually do uh, albums because I don't get to really listen to much or I get really stuck on one and then don't get to really do much else besides listen to that one out. But lately I've been thinking maybe I'll do a couple and if you guys like it, I'll keep doing them. You know, you can offer me some new albums. I'll check them out and rate them. Uh, anyway, the new Hollywood Undead album is coming out March 31st and I got a chance to listen to it. And uh, as a lot of you guys who have been with me know, I, I pretty much like almost all their stuff. They're, they're a band I think is just kind of more of the fun side of music and and has fun making music. A lot of people get them confused thinking they're really like these stupid guys who party them up. But if you really listen and you listen to their interviews, you, you would kind of see they're kind of in a lot of ways a parody band of making fun of the the crazy frat boys and stuff like that with making their sound more interesting than the frat boys would make it if they made music. So, um, with Hollywood Undead, they uh, shifted gears a lot in their sound <clears throat> throughout their career. So right before I get to the album, Swan Songs was definitely more of a rap, dark, kind of uh, gangster vibe with some metal in there and some screams and stuff like that. Whereas American Tragedy, my personal favorite one, is more of this heavy rock themed album and then... Notes of the Underground kind of tries to combine them, but not quite as well, and trying a new sound. And so Day of the Dead, their newest album, is definitely the most interesting album in a long time uh, from them because they're trying something brand new while keeping elements from all those albums. So uh, let me get to the pluses, negatives, you know, give you my favorite tracks and the tracks that I kind of skip. Uh, m my biggest plus for this album, everyone is on this album. It feels like they, they made an effort to all work together. Notes... Uh, Notes of the Underground, the last album, sounded like very separate. Like, each person had their own song. Some of them were together. And then American Tragedy was great, but it was very, f uh, what do you call it? Very formula. Uh, they, they stuck to what was safe. You know, they have the singer, the rapper, singer, rapper. Um, they weren't really trying to be different, I guess. So, it was nice to see them kind of have their own own style on this with all of them together like even some some of the people there's six people in the band would only have a couple of words each song but it brought something new to it so i really did love that uh another thing i really really enjoyed on this is the diversity is huge here um i enjoy notes but it suffered from trying to kind of rebirth the sound of american tragedy but a little bit more rap to and try to be a bit more mainstream and it didn't really do too well. I think a lot of fans of uh, Hollywood and Dead felt a little bit disappointed with that album, myself included. Uh, now, don't get me wrong. This goes for a more mainstream feel, even more so. But you got just so much different sounds from this dark hip-hop sound on Dark Places to more of this heavy rock on Let Go to more of this, uh, you know, normal rock like uh, on, uh, what do you call it, Save Me. And you got the kind of electronica sound on uh, Live Forever and Gravity. And then you go right to the, you know, the sound that you love from their American Tragedy or their first album from Usual Suspects is this industrial rap. Uh, rock combo and then you got day of the dead which is heavy rock with some screaming so you definitely got so many different sounds in this album and you got the the, the just the craziness of going from each track is going to sound totally different than the last um another huge plus and this just blows my mind my my most hated thing about hollywood undead is funny man is usually really fucking annoying and i usually hate his parts on albums save for a couple of tracks and the whole thing not one part on this album that i think funny man actually suck completely i actually liked him a lot on this album and he actually reads the entire album in usual suspects the very first song he is the first verse and it's not bad and then he just doesn't stop war child is an extremely impressive song for me because i kind of gave up on their party songs the party songs on notes of the underground were the worst party songs ever pigskin was possibly the fucking worst song i've ever seen them make and then the smoke one smoke it out whatever that shit sucked too uh with the exception of like medicine maybe every party song on notes of the underground really sucked american tragedy to me was a hit and miss a lot of people like coming in hot i hate that song uh, this is our town. I think it's okay. I like Gangster Sexy because it's just so over the top. But what I'm saying here is that all the party songs on this are really just fun. War Child, Party like Party With Myself, stuff like that. That is the Hollywood Undead I want to hear. It's very rap heavy. It's very electronic, but it's heavy at the same time. It's none of that shit boring crap that they had notes in the underground. Um, so 
I really do like Funny Man's kind of party tracks on this. Uh, another thing that's a huge improvement is Charlie Sheen is in this. And let's be honest, I love all the members. I think they all bring something. But Charlie Sheen is like the main rap attraction. And he comes hard on this. He was almost absent completely in Notes of the Underground. And on this, he is just in full force. Not only is he rapping again, and I mean really rapping, he kills it on the party tracks and the series tracks. On top of that, he's singing a lot more, and I actually like his singing voice, and he's doing some scream back vocals. He's doing everything. He just seems so much more attached to this album than the last one, and I love it. Um, I, I think a lot of the, another po positive is the experimenting. There's a lot on here. And some of it not so great. I can you know, really live without, uh, the sounds like, kind of like, uh, like, uh, take me home or whatever it's called and stuff like that. I'm not really a big fan of those new sounds, but I really, really enjoyed, like to me, war child is one of the more interesting new party sounds they've gone. Um, I'll be there is a is a, a very interesting track and I really started to enjoy it. it at first I was like whoa what the hell uh, but it's kind of like a mix between bullet and uh, coming back down together and uh, it really does it does it really well together so uh, some of the experimenting is really good some great some okay some meh but uh, one more positive and I know I'm keep going with all these positive there is no horrible tracks which is really surprising um, there's not one track I can say really sucked on here, and I haven't skipped any yet. <clears throat> there is tracks on every album from them that I have skipped, but it took me a while to get to, so that might change. But there's no horrible songs on this album, so it reminds me a lot of American Tragedy and Swan Song, because I didn't think there's any horrible songs on those albums, just kind of some okay that I'll skip. Whereas Notes the Underground definitely had some horrible songs. Pigskin is absolutely one of the worst songs. And Smoke Through, whatever the fuck that is, uh, really horrible song. The, those two songs were absolutely terrible uh, and made me really disappointed in the album. And then there's some that I just don't feel like Believe is obviously a song that's made for the radio. And I'll get to that here in a second with this album. But so there's just some songs I don't like on Notes the Underground. Whereas here there was nothing I listened to where I'm like, damn, this sucks. I'll never listen to it. Um, now, my negatives, uh, there's not too much, but one thing I do have to say is I wish there were maybe two or three more harder rock songs. Now, that can change with the deluxe Best Buy edition. There's two more songs plus the iTunes one called Ghost. Um, but really, there's only, I would say, maybe three hard rock songs, if we can really say that. Um, you know, of course, Day of the Dead is pretty pretty much like their old stuff, and you, you got, you're going to love it. Let Go is definitely a, a great sound for me, because I like their hard stuff, and that is definitely hard. Um, and that's really it. I would say Usual Suspects, people are getting electronica fused with industrial rock, and that's definitely rock. But a lot of their other stuff is uh, not soft, but it's definitely not the hard rock that we heard on American Tragedy or even some tracks on Notes Here on Ground like We Are. Um, so I was a little bit disappointed with that, but, uh, you know, maybe with the, the Best Buy ones, we'll get a couple of more. Um, now, the, the one thing that really kind of annoyed me, uh, Take Me Home is it sounds like Imagine Dragons. Like, I feel like the studio, I mean, the label came in, they're like, hey, guys, Imagine Dragons is like the biggest fucking thing in the world right now. Make an Imagine Dragons copycat song. And they did. It's not that it's terrible. I mean, I can listen to it. I don't mind it. But it feels so boring compared to the rest of this beautiful high energy album it just feels really boring now i do love the fact that we do get um danny to sing two of verses and we also get what i believe is the curls which we never hear him actually do anything um so that's cool and all but it's just an imagine dragons copy for me it just sounds so much like imagine dragons it kind of fucking annoys me um and now, the, the negative that I'm sure a lot of people are feeling, I guess, because it's such a different sound, this is definitely more mainstream than their other previous albums. This, these, a lot of these songs, especially with the choruses, you can tell they're going for the radio. That's simple. I don't think they're hiding it. I don't think they give a shit what people think. But there's definitely choruses on here that sound more radio-friendly than ever before. Now, don't get me wrong. Despite what some people think of their hardcore Swan Songs album, because that uh, just drives me nuts that they think this is the only really Hollywood Undead album. Swan Songs definitely had so many mainstream appeal songs that people don't realize. Number 5 was made for the radio. Despite the cursing and stuff, that is made for the radio. Young is made for the radio. Those type of songs, Undead, those songs are made for the radio. You just don't realize it. You think these guys are... You think those songs are like hardcore, but no. Songs like The Diary, 
uh, the city, stuff like that. That's not made for the radio, okay? Swan Songs is a great album in a lot of ways, but it definitely hasn't. It doesn't age as well as people think. Anyway, they've always tried to go for the radio with American Tragedy, Hear Me Now, super radio friendly. Um, you know, uh, Bullet, Levitate. Those songs are definitely radio friendly. Doesn't mean they're bad. Notes the Underground, We Are, uh, Dead Bite. Those songs are made idea with the radio. Now, Believe, oh my god, Believe is one of the worst offenders ever. Um, on this, there's definitely songs, obviously, for the radio. War Child is made for the club or something like that. You can tell, okay? And songs like that, Gravity, Disease, uh, Party By Myself, Live Forever, even Save Me, they all have more of a mainstream now feel. That doesn't mean pop. People get pop confused with electronica or uh, electric sounding rock. It doesn't mean that. Pop is when you make, uh, like, a Justin Bieber song. Nothing on here sounds like a Justin Bieber song. I promise you. Um, but it definitely has a more mainstream appeal. So if you're more into that hardcore, I killed everybody, shit, you're just not going to get it here. But if you are like the diversity of the Hollywood and Dead in the past, you're definitely going to get the gangster side here, the rock side, the, the interesting lyrics from so people don't even know what half these songs are about. And the more I listen, the more I get, like, disease. People are like, what is Bell Pills? No. It's actually about religion, but it's a really interesting way they do it. Party by myself, I love because it's making fun of people that party, but nobody really gets that. Um, stuff like that, you got to listen to the songs. This album is definitely more rap centric. It's that simple. So if you're more into their rock stuff, that was the previous two albums, you're not going to like it. However, if you did like Swan Songs, you might like this album too because it's very much combined that way. Um, so this is going on way too long. People have probably already gave up listening. So real fast, I'm just going to list. Three tracks that I've really been, like, kind of really liking a lot. I love Let Go. It's probably my favorite song on the album. Uh, with War Child being really fun to listen to. I blast that shit every time I get in the car. It's fun. And then Dark Places is definitely really cool because it reminds me so much of their first album. It, it has a very hip-hop feel. Dark. And it's really, no pun intended, and it's really just a good song, lyrically. Um, the least songs I probably will listen to, I'll probably skip very soon, are, of course, Take me home not really a fan of it and live forever is just okay i prefer songs like gravity and disease over it they all sound very similar those are really the only songs i'll be skipping um so there it is that's my album uh review for day of the dead i will listen to sing and fuck the world and ghost when they all release on the 31st and if you want me to if you want to hear my opinion i'll list them below but uh, that's it. So if you guys listen, let me know what you think. Uh, also, let me know, I guess, what your favorite album is for them. Mine is still American Tragedy. Um, but this and Swan Songs are very close, very comparable, very different sounds. But I would listen to both these back-to-back -back easy. And then Notes is obviously the weaker point of them all for me. So list yours below of your favorite Hollywood Dead album. And also listen below what you thought of this album. And give it about three, four tries of listening the first time. I was a little taken back by some of the sounds, but the third time I was really enjoying a lot of the new sounds. Love all the little whistling and all the little effects they add now, and all the different singers, and they're all singing, so it's really cool. Anyway, I'm out. I give this album a freaking 8.5 out of 10. Really enjoyed it. Great album, besides a couple of cheesy choruses and a couple of way too different sounds. I really dug this album.